Hi guys, Sonia wanted me to film Mia's birth story from my perspective. I remember waking up on the early morning of the 21st of June 2018. My wife was waking me up and she was saying, this is it. And the first thought that came into my mind was, what? <laughs> and then it dawned on me and we were going to have a baby. And the second thought that came into my mind was, I'm so not ready for this. And it all felt really unreal. Sonia had this quiet calm about her. She was not stressed at all. No worries, no nothing, just happy. It was happening and she was so, she was excited, really excited. And I called the birthing ward and they asked us to time the contractions. And we did, they were strange they were varied in, in time and they said that the contractions had just started but apparently sonia had been had Sonia's contractions had started the night before and uh, she thought it was braxton hicks but they were just contractions and then they were getting really fast by that time an hour or two hours later around seven or eight we called her mom and let her know that we were it had started it had begun then we called the hospital again and they just told us to come in and I was around eight so we got out there Sonia was not dressed in the attire she had desired to be wearing she was wearing my old slacks we drove there in our crappy car I was fully aware of everything and again it was very unreal for me it was like this little person is coming and I just didn't feel real we then proceeded to the ward we went up to the third floor, I believe, and we got a guest room and we got measurements taken and, and timing of the contractions to confirm that we were actually having the baby. And then we got shown into our room, which had a big bathtub where if we wanted to do a water birth. And the midwife was, I think she was like 28, and she had already had two kids herself. So that was comforting. Sonia started pacing and she was again very calm, very determined, not really stressed and we were just there together with the midwife and it went very well. She walked around and started getting the gas because of the pain and she was enjoying the gas and got a little, we're supposed to say that, that she got, she was like she was a little bit drunk, the effect of the gas and it was really fun being around her we walked around and went into the tub came out and yeah and I had to help her go to the bathroom she was she was constantly talking about that for months afterwards that this was not the romantic ideas that she had had about the giving birth to me it started feeling real at that point because it was just about this basic thing we have wrapped our society and, and we, we hide away from births and deaths and all the physical things that happen to us, ailments and everything. We really show the reality of it. There, all of a sudden, it was all so real. I grew up in an environment where this was real. I watched lambs giving, sheep giving birth and, and washed in a slaughterhouse. That's probably going to come out wrong to you who, who don't understand. But you see the blood, you see the gore, you see the reality of it all. Yeah, the reality of it was apparent and, and I grew up in an environment where this was reality. It just made it all real for me that she was, I was helping her and, and, and got into the contractions. It got stronger and stronger and I was there by her side. She went into the birthing pool and then she came out and she was we were asking for the epidural. And then it was too late for it and I was kind of annoying because we thought we needed it. Maybe it would have made things easier, I don't know, but it was just too late for it. And she was just ready to give birth and had to start pushing. And she was so brave, strong, and I was full of admiration because she was just tackling this. And this was, this was no small feat. This is like the biggest thing I think you can do as a human being, give birth to another human being. And she started seeing me, so I took a peek and I didn't see anything. But the midwife seemed to know what she was. But after about 30 minutes of pushing, there was nothing happening. 
and I was getting kind of pissed with the midwife because I just wanted to know really what was going on, not hear some cheer talk about this. And I knew Sonia would push through it, just like they, I sensed it in her that she wouldn't give up no matter what, she was going to get this baby out. And we didn't need some fake prep talk from the midwife to do it. Sonia was actually getting fed up with her as well. And she asked me at one point what I saw and I told her nothing. And she's like, got really, like, got a little bit pissed off. And then she kept on pushing. And she was screaming and I was screaming with her. And I just let go of everything. I just did what I could to be there for her, support her. She pushed and she pushed. And finally we saw the head, the black hair, the crown coming out. And then maybe I've said again, five more minutes. And it took a lot longer than that. I think Sonia pushed for over two hours. It was so amazing to watch her do that. So strong. And finally, the head was coming through. And the midwife had made the cuts to help the baby come out. And then all of a sudden she was there. And I was like, I was tearing up. Mia started crying. And I got to cut the cord. And I realized everything had changed. Nothing would be the same again. This little human was now in the world. And I would have to protect her with all I have. All I can do. I try to make her into the best version of herself. Or rather help her be the best version of herself. Mia's grandmother and her partner actually flew in. Sonia's mom, Rosa, flew in. That morning I went to Glasgow caught an air, Iceland air flight and flew over and they were there before me I was born waiting outside they didn't get to come in because of the regulation once me was born it was so amazing to see them she rose with her grandchild she was so proud of her the stitching took over two hours or around two hours seems to be have been problematic at least the main wife felt like she was in over her head Later we found out she hadn't managed to do a proper job in the long run. I think it took a little bit, took a lot out of us. And it was very painful for Sonia and for both of us. And it put a strain on us and our relationship. But we got through that. Because I think that's what we're like, both of us. We just don't give up. And I hope we never give up. And when we finally managed to finish the stitching we went down to a resting ward where we stayed the night and there for the first time me I slept on my chest don't remember if I slept at all Sonia snored a little and got some sleep I just lay there with that little bundle she weighed so little she was so small lay there with my, her on my chest and it dawned on me that my own mortality became real that day I realized I would die. I realized that I would leave her behind. And I had to prepare her for life as well as I could. And it was so weird to finally get that feeling. Because I've gone through life thinking I'm going to be a hundred year old. I'm going to be... I felt emotional at times. Probably insane, but that's what it felt like. Because you felt like you could do everything, anything. And holding this little bundle of crying and pooping, I realized that I wasn't going to be immortal. She would need me a lot for a long time. A friend once told me man, during the pregnancy that six months after the baby is born, you don't remember what you occupied your time with. He was a lot younger than me when he had his first child. And it probably took me well over a year to get to that place, but nowadays if I don't see Mia, hold her, wake up with her, I feel like something is amiss. And this has been the greatest change in my life ever. We've been very lucky with her. She doesn't cry much. She's not a big complainer and she's incredibly positive. Always smiling, always ready to dance. And you know that when she's miserable, she either has a bug or she's sleepy. And then you just cuddle her up, talk to her and she's fine. She's happy when she knows she has us with her. I know she's not always going to be like that. She's going to change. 
She's gonna be bossy, that's for sure, because he's already wrapping that worn around her, around her fingers. I just hope she gets to be a determined young woman. And I hope that one day I'll get to hold my grandchildren and spoil them rotten. Tell her how to raise kids and maybe even help her raise her kids. I will undoubtedly annoy her like I annoy her and her mother already. I hope that we will see a sibling for her as well, so that she doesn't have to be one alone against this para her parents when she grows up, but that she has someone to look after and mentor in the arts of being annoying. And I just hope that we can help her be happy with her life. She will have a good life. We just want her to have what she has given to us. Thank you for watching.